Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. I'm really excited about this video today because earlier this week, SmartSuite announced their integration with Make. And Make.com, formerly Integramat, is a platform that allows us to create integrations between SmartSuite and other applications. Now, there has been one available for Zapier, and SmartSuite has had their API available for a while. So there's always been possibilities to automate and to integrate. But this feels like something special. I think a lot of people over the past few months, to be quite transparent, have started to shift over more into using Make instead of Zapier. Of course, with our clients, I'm happy to use whatever integration platform that you choose. But typically, we see some additional functionality inside of Make. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about using SmartSuite for the first time. You don't really have to have any background knowledge to use this video. We also are not going to pay any subscription fee for testing this out with Make. They have different subscription tiers, and you'll probably find that if you use Make a lot and you need different operations, you have lots of different integrations that are firing, you'll probably have to pay for a plan. But there's no reason that you need to pay anything to get started. You can do this entirely on the free plan. Now, one of the reasons I'm so excited about this is because in all honesty, the ability to integrate and then the ability to have scripting, that's the other feature I'm really hoping that SmartSuite continues to be working on and deploys at some point, really gives you the ability to truly make a custom application within a no-code environment. And I think when this all comes together, you're going to see the ability to do many, many different things. So even if the SmartSuite product team doesn't choose to actually productize something, you could come and work with partners such as myself, and we can design and create brand new applications based off of the ability to integrate and create custom scripts around your platform. It's all kind of a cohesive layer of how this works together. Let's jump into it. We're going to use Google Sheets as the other endpoint that we're utilizing. The reason we're doing this is because it seems like most people have access to a G Suite account, either just a free one or you've got it through work. You can certainly use a different application, but I feel like this is just a, an easy way to set it up. And the way that we're thinking about this, the business use case, is that we have leads coming into a Google spreadsheet and we want to be able to have those leads come from the spreadsheet into our smart suite account. Maybe we're utilizing Google Forms or maybe we have some other third party software that's writing those leads into Google Sheet. And we want to be able to take those to write them into SmartSuite. Now, I do want to show you if we're looking at our automations and we're looking at our triggers, we don't have anything for Google Sheets today. My recommendation would be when you've got the ability to just use SmartSuite's automations natively and they're coming out with more and more, there's no need to use a third party application like Make. In fact, and let me just add one so I can add a follow up action here. You'll notice that we've got the ability to go the other way around. We could say, when a record's created in SmartSuite, go ahead and create in Google Sheets. So my guess is, you know, down the road, this is something that could be done natively inside of SmartSuite as opposed to using a third-party application. But for now, it's not possible to go the other way around to have our leads coming in to Google Sheets. The important piece is to know here that I do have an app. I called this Leads, and I just created a solution for our demos for Make. And then on the Google Sheets side of it, I just called this Make Spreadsheet Leads. And I just have a first name, last name, email, and date. We could, of course, add many, many different kinds of fields so you're not restricted, but we're just going to keep this simple. So it should be easy enough to go ahead and sign up for a Make account. Remember, you can just do the free plan to get started. You don't have to subscribe at this point or put in a credit card. You can just go ahead and get started. And you might be taken to a slightly different screen. I already set this up, but we're going to create a new scenario. If you just signed up, you're going to see kind of this widget and you can create the scenario from there. So even if it looks a little bit different, you'll be able to get there as well. But let's go ahead and click on creating a new scenario. And this is probably what you'll see. You've got this kind of pulsing icon with a plus button here. And so the first thing that we're going to do is search for our Google Sheets application, because remember, that's what we're going to be listening to is the trigger of adding a new record there. We'll just search for Sheets or Google Sheets. We can select that application. And you'll notice that there's a lot of different triggers and actions. Now, this, of course, is an application that a lot of people utilize. So there's plenty of different choices. Smart Suite, you've got a few choices, and we'll see that it'll develop over time. We're going to go ahead and do Watch Rows. So when there are new rows, that's when we want this to be able to fire. 
And this is one that's time-based, meaning that when we add a new lead record, it's not going to immediately fire. Now, that's different for other kinds of applications where it's really based on the event, like on the creation of this record, this immediately happens. In this case, it's time-based. If you're on the free account, it's going to limit you to every 15 minutes that it's going to check for this. This will work just fine for our purposes. But again, if that's something that you want it to happen at a greater frequency, you'll need to upgrade for it. Now, the first thing that we need to do is choose an account. We need to create a connection. We can press the add button here. And we can call this whatever we want. I'm fine just leaving it as my Google connection because we're not actually creating multiple connections. Maybe you do have different accounts and you want to create multiple connections. But again, we're just keeping it simple for now. I'll save this. It's going to open up and ask you to authentic. And so you'll choose which account that you want to connect. You have to give it the permissions that you need. And then from here, we now have our connection. Now we have our drive that's available. I already created that spreadsheet that I showed you before, so I can just click and select it. This will give you the ability to see your folders and in your files that you have. I'm just going to search. And then I just have a default sheet. So I'm selecting that one. And we do have headers here. And I think that's helpful because then you can actually contextualize and know which fields that you're talking about. And we'll change this down so we're just interacting with a single lead record. Press OK here. And we'll say since specific ID, that's fine. Now we'll add another module. Here's where we're going to select Smart Suite. You'll see that it's in beta right now, so there's still some kinks that are being worked out, uh, and they'll be releasing new features with it. But it's great how far it's come already. And you'll see that our options for actions are to create a record, update a record, or make an API call. Now, if you are more familiar with APIs, this will give you some additional functionality that you need. What I'd really like to see in the near future is the ability to find records, similar to how we can do that in our automations. I've created a video on how we can find records within automations. I'd love to see that soon as one of our available actions. But in this case, all we want to do is we're listening for those rows when they come over, and we're going to create a record for that row. Now we need to do the same thing. We need to create a connection here. We'll add a connection. And this is where we need to find both a workspace ID and API token. If we head back into Smart Suite, our workspace ID is located right here in the URL itself. We've got app.smartsuite.com, and then you see your workspace ID. You can go ahead and copy that, and you can paste it in here. And then we have our API token, and you can for sure see this as an administrator of your workspace. Now you can see API key right here, and that's going to take you to your API token. And you can go ahead and copy that. Now, remember, this is something you don't want to expose, which is why I'm obscuring this here. You can destroy the token if you need to. But if you've created a bunch of integrations all reliant on that token and you destroy it and create a new one, well, then you have to reset all of those. It's going to break all the functionality. So that's something you typically don't want to have to do. We'll X out of here, head back into Make, and we can paste our API token. Then we'll go ahead and press save. And this should be able to validate our connection here. Great. And now once that's connected, we can see our available solutions. I created that one specifically for Make. I call it AH for Automation Helpers Make. And I can select my application. Again, we're creating it in our leads because we're dealing with leads that are coming over. And then this is kind of the fun part where we get to map the values across. Now, one thing that's interesting, I did a little bit of testing ahead of time. And even if the title is required, the primary field, even if that's required in the UI side, it's not actually required on the integration side. So you can leave that blank. It's not going to error out on you. That's just fine. We're just going to focus on our main information here. We want to be able to put a first name here. So we'll map that to these are the the columns that we have available to us 
from the spreadsheet. I'll select first name. We don't have a middle name. We do have a last name. So I've got a date. I've got a name. We want our email address to come over. And that should be fine. Now, of course, we could assign it. We could write some logic to determine who it gets assigned to. We could do lots of other things. It might be a best practice as well if you actually created another field, which I didn't, where we want to have like a data source. And we could say, this came in from a Google integration. So I could have the description mapped to like the spreadsheet ID if I wanted to. And a reason to do that might be if we have leads coming from different sources and we need to troubleshoot where they came from, that might be helpful to do, but you certainly don't need to. And that should be enough for what we need. We'll go ahead and press OK. It's going to refresh our metadata here. We need to save our scenario. This collectively is called a scenario. And then at this point, let's go ahead and add some data here. This is what I was talking about before. I actually previously when I tested this just did a two year date form and it errored it out. It wouldn't actually send the data across. So if you're getting any weird errors, just make sure that the date formatting is exactly the same. In this case, it's using a four digit date format for the year. And we'll go back into our scenario here. This is what I like. You've got the ability to schedule it, which again will run every 15 minutes. But in this case, we just want to test it. We want to have to wait 15 minutes for it. So we can click run once. And it'll fire. It says the scenario run was completed. And let's go check our data over here. Hooray, it's created our new record. This is what's really cool. It's got our compound field of first and last name. And this is what I love about the SmartSuite team. They move really, really quickly on this stuff. So earlier in the week when they first released this, it didn't have the ability to map to a compound field like name. And I was like, well, how are we going to map leads if we don't have the name? And they fixed that just within a couple days. So I'm sure we're going to see this with other field types. I know other users in the community have said, well, how do we do this field or that field that's not present? I'm sure you're going to be able to see a lot of improvements and changes coming as folks continue to use this for the next few weeks here. But that works successfully. I'd also be curious about things like, well, it came in at 1 a.m. I'd like to see that just as a date. So is there a way we could just send over the date? I don't know exactly what's happening there, but at least for proof of concept, this is pretty good. And then we have so much additional functionality here. We're not going to get into it in this video. And in fact, we could create a whole course around how to use make and all of the advanced functionality, but some of the helpful things you've got the ability to actually see the executions that take place. You've got logs here to see the history of this running both a, a simple view and an advanced log. You can see executions that fail out. I mean, there's just so much here that you can do, and this is what really sets it apart in terms of its uh, complexity that it can do from Zapier. And I'd also encourage you to just to check out the wide variety of applications that are available. I mean, there's just tons you can choose from. I think for many organizations, starting to think of not your data as being siloed within one application, but think of how does your data move across your organization is just so powerful when you start to integrate systems together. I hope this was helpful for you to see how you can get up and running with SmartSuite and Make. I'd be interested to hear in the comments what kinds of applications you're planning on integrating. And of course, feel free to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. We're offering a free 30-minute consultation. And one of the top things that we do for our partners who reach out to us is helping with integrations. You've got data in all of these systems, and we have lots of experience to help you pull that in and integrate those systems together.